Today we are tagging along with Captain Sam and Anthony Slavich. These gents are fourth generation oystermen and we are out to survey their oyster lease. Uh, my brother and I uh, try to assess the, the stocks that we have available to us in this lease. It's uh, one of our prime producing leases. We're hoping to determine you know, where we can begin working, you know, what type of product we'll have available to us at that time. Oyster fishing is really just the end result of what truly is oyster farming. Mother Nature can only produce so many oysters per season, so actually creating and aiding other producing reefs is the key to productivity. He's getting into the area we planted with some stone, these stones right here. So we'll see, we'll see if we have any success, any, anything happened with what we put down in April. One of the largest things that you guys do out here to help your farming is that you have to have a rough surface for those oysters to attach to. Now, y'all actually bed this cement. That's, this is crushed cement, and uh, you know, we, you don't want it too big, you don't want it to interfere with the oyster, but you want it big enough to where you can have two or three that'll, that'll attach to it. We, we try to put the oysters where they, we think that the environment's good for them. Okay, so Anthony, what you're saying is, is you guys laid a bed of these rocks, right. and now that has turned into Little, little baby little balls of just baby oysters. Right, right. That quick. That quick. That's that's you know pretty good growth you know right in just a few months time, and by next year, by next year, we'll probably be able to move these oysters and you know they'll be good for seed. The process of bedding or farming begins with small gravel-sized pieces of crushed concrete creating a rough surface so that the small baby oysters, or spat as they are called, can attach to it and hold themselves in place so as not to be carried away by tide and also for protection from predators. You get a school of black drum and these oyster beds, and this is one bite. They'll swallow that, that, that whole rock and there's a plate in their throat that, that crushes the, 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 the oyster shell and they, they swallow the meat and they spit the shells out through their gills and through their mouth and, and get rid of the shell and swallow the meat. They, it's like a, an oyster eating machine. This is not easy work as it takes tons of this crushed bedding to make a difference when you're talking about thousands of acres of water that is seeded by these fishermen. It typically does happen naturally but you need to augment from time to time. Sometimes you don't get as much of a spat catch, a natural catch as you'd like. You, you're harvesting them quicker than what nature replaces them, so you, you, you go to other places, either the state reef or your, your own leases, and you transplant from your own leases and you plant from the state reef. The state actually helps these oystermen by seeding oysters on state-owned waters. Then by season, the oyster fishers are able to dredge those reefs, picking up the smaller spat and then replanting them to their own leases. The state holds probably half of the uh, productive, productive oyster grounds as seed grounds, and uh, that's what fishermen typically go to get their seed oysters. And if not available there, they uh, they have to take you know a different route and uh, uh, either transplant from their own leases or plant some uh, uh, culture material so so that their their next spat catch would be a, a better one. It's not just pulling a boat out here, dropping a trawl, pulling it for 10 no, minutes. It's, and, it's, and it's, a lot, it's, it's a lot similar to uh, row crop farming. You know, you, you, have to, you have to plant in order to be able to harvest. Uh, typically, it's a lot of work and you have to keep assisting nature, providing yourself with enough product to be able to sell. So how do you know what, what you're chopping off there? Because it just looks like all one big wad to me. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it takes a little practice. Actually, my dad used to say in order to, to, to train a man to call oysters properly, it takes a year. And I tend to agree with that. And, and you still have all your fingers at, after you. Yeah, you're supposed to at the end of the day. <laughs> so as you can see, a ton goes into oyster fishing before the first oyster ever hits the boat. Which brings me to the most important part, quality. And you want to look for the hinge. You want to kind of wiggle a knife and get it in the hinge without pushing. And then you make a little twist. And as you twist, the, twist it open and scrape the top end of the shell and get the eye on the top. And now you're ready to break them free on the bottom side.
pretty good, huh? You guys have a pretty good grocery store out here. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, I mean, when they're good like that. When I tell you that is the perfect salinity. As, as, you know. And and fat, 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 and full of taste. It's they like, don't really get much better than that. that just, you know? That's unbelievable. I mean, they, they, With a TV crew on the boat, profit margins can go way down. And to put a little extra change in your pocket on a normal day, well, it's a workout. I would say a good day is, is uh, any time you can, you can break 100 sacks of oysters in a day, uh, that, that would be a, a really nice day. God, dog, it's got to be over 100 pounds. It's about 100 pounds, it's, it's I think. It's in that range, right, about a, right, right around 100. Size really does matter when it comes to oysters. A three to four inch oyster is considered just about perfect for half shell. The average growth of an oyster is about one inch per year, so from spat to harvest, well, you could do the math. It looks like it's got three growing years in it. You got one, two, three. I'm, I'm gonna go with three years on that ice. You can see the lines of growth. And right. It's up here, here. So that, yeah, they're, they're gonna shoot out from November through January, then well, to February they'll, they'll grow. And you'll see this flake on the edge. You see this ice is growing already. Here's August and they're growing. You see that flake? That's right. new growth right. on the ice. A few other facts about harvesting. Any oyster that is meant for raw consumption must be refrigerated within one hour of leaving the water. Anything over that time limit must be shucked and processed. It's been a great day. Lots of new growth on the lease and plenty of perfect select oysters for the ride home. When we come back, most of these Hopedale beauties will end up just up the road in New Orleans. It's a 4 a.m. start at P&J Oyster, and it's the next stop these oysters will make in their journey to your plate.